ಅಂಬೋರ್ಭುವ ಸ್ವಹತ ಸವಿತೂರವರೇಣ್ಯಂ ಭರ್ಗೋ ದೇವ ಸದೀಮಹಿ ಧಿಯೋ ಯೋ ನ ಪ್ರಚೋದಯ ಓಂ ಶಾಂತಿ 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 ನಮಸ್ತೆ ಮೈ ಡಿಯರ್ ಫ್ರೆಂಡ್ಸ್ ಐ ಆಮ್ ಗೋಯಿಂಗ್ ಟು give you a very wonderful video in this video maharishi ramnath disciple a devraj modalier has collected various spiritual subjects of maharishi ramna the first topic discussed by a modalier based on maharishi ramna's teachings is happiness all beings desire happiness always happiness without a tinge of sorrow at the same time everybody loves himself best the cause for love is only happiness so that happiness must be lie within oneself further that happiness is daily experienced by everyone in sleep when there is no mind to attain that natural happiness one must know oneself for that self inquiry who am i is the chief means happiness is the nature of the self they are not different the only happiness there is is of the self that is the truth there is no happiness in worldly objects because of our ignorance we imagine we derive happiness from them if a man generally imagines his happiness is due to external causes it is reasonable to conclude that his happiness must increase with the increase of possessions and diminished in proportion to their diminution diminution therefore if he is devoid of possessions his happiness should be nil what however is the real experience of man does it confirm this view in deep sleep the man is devoid of all possessions including his own body instead of being unhappy he is quite happy everyone desires to sleep soundly the conclusion therefore is that happiness is inherent in man and is not due to external causes one must realize his self in order to open the store of unalloyed happiness there is a story in panchadasi which illustrates that our pains and pleasures are not due to facts but to our concepts two young men of a village went on a pilgrimage to north india one of them died there but the other having picked up some job decided to return to his village only after some time meanwhile he came across a wandering pilgrim and sent word through him to his village about himself and his dead friend the pilgrim conveyed the news and in doing so in in advertently change the names of the living and the dead man the result was that the dead man's people were rejoicing that he was doing well and the living man's people were in grief that he was dead i used to sit on the floor and lie on the ground no clothes spread out that is freedom 
the sofa is a bondage it is jail for me i am not allowed to sit where and how i please is it not bondage one must be free to do as one pleases and should not be served by others no want is the greatest bliss it can be realized only by experience even an emperor is no match for a man with no wants next topic is the self and non self the reality and the world existence or consciousness is the only reality consciousness plus waking we call waking consciousness plus sleep we call sleep consciousness plus dream we call dream consciousness is the screen on which all the pictures come and go the screen is real the pictures are mere shadows on it the self and the appearance is therein as the snake in the rope can be well illustrated like this there is a screen on that screen first appears the figure of a king he sits on a throne then before him on that same screen a play begins with various figures and objects and the king on the screen watches the play on the same screen the seer and the scene are mere shadows on the screen which is the only reality sporting all the pictures in the world also the seer and the scene together constitute the mind and the mind is sported by or based on the self the ayajata school of advaita says nothing exists except the one reality there is no birth or death no projection or drawing in no sadaka aspirant no momoksha one who desire to be liberated no mukta one who is liberated no bondage no liberation the one unity alone exists forever to those who find it difficult to grasp this truth and ask how can we ignore this solid world we see all around us the dream experience is pointed out and they are told all that you see depends on the seer apart from the seer there is no scene this is called drishti srishti vada or the argument that one first creates out of his mind and then sees what his mind itself has created to those who cannot grasp even this and who further argue the dream experience is so short while the world always exists the dream experience was limited to me but the world is felt and seen not only by me but by so many and we cannot call such a world non existent the argument called srishti drishti vada is addressed and they are told god first created such and such a thing out of such and such an element and then something else and so forth that alone will satisfy them their minds are not otherwise satisfied and they ask themselves how can all geography all maps all sciences stars planets and the rules governing or relating to them and all knowledge be totally untrue to such it is the best way to say yes god created all this and so you see it all these are only to shoot the capacity of the hearers the absolute can only be one there is first the white light so to call it of the self which transcends both light and darkness in it no object can be seen there is neither seer nor seen 
then there is also total darkness avidya in which no objects are seen but from the self proceeds a reflected light the light of pure mind manas and it is this light which gives room for the existence of all the film of the world which is seen neither in total light nor in total darkness but only in subdued or reflected light from the point of view of jnana knowledge or the reality the pain seen in the world is certainly a dream as is the world of which any particular pain like hunger is an infinitesimal part in the dream also you yourself feel hunger you see others suffering from hunger you feed yourself and moved by pity feed the others whom you find suffering from hunger so long as the dream lasted all those pains were as real as you now think the pain in the world to be it was only when you woke up that you discovered that the pain in the dream was unreal you might have eaten to the full and gone to sleep you dream that you work hard and long in the hot sun all day are tired and hungry and want to eat a lot then you wake up and find your stomach is full and you have not stayed out of your bed but this does not mean that while you are in the dream you can act as if the pain you feel is not real the hunger in the dream has to be assuaged by the food in the dream the fellow beings you found so hungry in the dream had to be provided with food in the dream you can never mix up the two states the dream and the waking state till you reach the state of jnana and thus wake up out of maya you must do social service by relieving suffering whenever you see it but even then you must do it without ahankara that is without the sense of i am the doer but with the feeling i am the lord's tool similarly one must not be conceited by thinking i am helping a man below me he needs help i am in a position to help i am superior and he inferior but you must help the man as a means of worshiping god in that man all such service is for the self and not for anybody else you are not helping anybody else but only yourself the book kevala navnita has asked and answered six questions on maya they are instructive number 1 what is maya the answer is it is anirvachaniya or indescribable to to whom does it come the answer is to the mind or ego who feels that he is a separate entity who thinks i do this or this is mine third where does it come from and how does it originate the answer nobody can say fourth how did it arise the answer is through non vichara through failure to enquire who am i fifth if the self and maya both exist does this not invalidate the theory of advaita the answer is it need not since maya is dependent on the self as the picture is on the screen the picture is not real in the sense that the screen is real 6 if the self and maya are one could it not be argued that the self is of the nature of maya and that it is also illusory the answer is no the self can be capable of producing illusion without being illusory a conjurer may create for our entertainment the illusion of people animals and things and we see all of them as clearly as we see him but after the 
performance he alone remains and all the visions he created have disappeared he is not a part of the vision but solid and real the books use the following illustration to help explain creation the self is like the canvas for a painting first a paste is smeared over it to close the small holes that are in the canvas this paste can be compared to the antaryami in developer in all creation then the artist makes an outline on the canvas this can be compared to the sukshma sridha subtle body of all creatures for instance the light and sound bindu and nada out of which all things arise within this outline the artist paints his picture with colors etc and this can be compared to the cross forms that constitute the world vedanta says that the cosmos springs into view simultaneously with the seer there is no creation by stages or steps it is similar to the creation in dream where the experiencer and objects of experience come into existence at the same time to those who are not satisfied with this explanation theories of gradual creation are offered in books it is not at all correct to say that advaitins of the sankara school deny the existence of the world or that they call it unreal on the other hand it is more real to them than to others their world will always exist whereas the world of the other schools will have origin growth and decay and as such cannot be real they only say that the world as world is not real but that the world as brahma is real all is brahma nothing exists but brahma and the world as brahma is real the self is the one reality that always exists and it is by the light of the self that all other things are seen we forget it and concentrate on the appearance the light in the hall burns both when persons are present and when they are absent both when persons are enacting something as in a theater and when nothing is being enacted it is the light which enables us to see the hall the persons and the acting we are so engrossed with the objects or appearances revealed by the light that we pay no attention to the light in the waking or dream state in which things appear and in sleep state in which we see nothing there is always the light of consciousness or self like the hall lamp which is always burning the thing to do is to concentrate on the seer and not on the scene not on the objects but on the light which reveals them questions about the reality of the world and about the existence of pain or evil in the world will all cease when you enquire who am i and find out the seer without a seer the world and the evils thereof alleged do not exist the world is of the form of a the five categories of sense objects and nothing else these five kinds of objects are sensed by the five senses as all are perceived by the mind through these five senses the world is nothing but the mind is there a world apart from the mind though the world and consciousness emerge and disappear together the world shines or is perceived only through consciousness that source wherein both these arise and disappear 
and which itself neither appears nor disappears is the perfect reality. If the mind, the source of all knowledge and activity subsides, the vision of the world will cease, just as knowledge of the real rope does not dawn till the fancied notion of the serpent disappears, vision experience of the reality cannot be gained unless the superimposed vision of the universe is abandoned. abandoned. That which really exists is only the self, the world, jiva, individual self and Ishvara, God are mental creations like the appearance of silver in mother of pearl. All these appear at the same time and disappear similarly. The self alone is the world, the ego and Ishvara. To the Jnani, it is immaterial whether the world appears or not. Whether it appears or not, his attention is always on the self. Take the letters and the paper on which they are printed. You are wholly engrossed with the letters and have no attention left for the paper. But the Jnani thinks only of the paper as the real substratum, whether the letters appear or not. You make all kinds of sweets from various ingredients and in various shapes and they all taste sweet because there is sugar in all of them and sweetness is the nature of sugar. In the same way, all experiences and the absence of them contain the illumination which is the nature of the self. Without the self, they cannot be experienced. Just as without sugar, not one of the articles you make can taste sweet. The immanent being is called Iswara, immense, immense can only be with Maya. It, Iswara, is the knowledge of being along with Maya. From the subtle conceit, Hirne Garbha rises. From Hirne Garbha, the gross concrete Virat rises. Chit Atma is pure being only. As regards the existence of pain in the world, the wise one explains from his experience that if one withdraws within the self, there is an end of all pain. The pain is felt so long as the object is different from oneself, but when the self is found to be an undivided whole, who and what is there to feel? The Upanishadic text, I am Brahma, only means Brahma exists as I. Third topic is mind. Mind is a wonderful force inherent in the self. That which rises in this body as I is the mind. When the subtle mind emerges through the brain and the senses, the gross names and forms are cognized. When it remains in the heart, names and forms of disappear. If the mind remains in the heart, the I or the ego, which is the source of all thoughts, will go and the self, the real eternal I alone will shine. Where there is not the slightest trace of the ego, there is the self. Mind and breath have the same source. Hence, breath is controlled when mind is controlled and mind when breath is controlled. Breath is the gross form of the mind. Pranayama, breath control is only an aid to subdue the mind and will not serve to kill it. 
लाइक प्राणायाम वर्शिप ऑफ ए डीटी जपा रेपिटेशन विद मंत्र स्ट्रिक्ट रेगुलेशन ऑफ डाइट आर ऑल एड्स फॉर माइंड कंट्रोल कंट्रोल ऑफ ब्रेथ प्राणायाम मे बी इंटरनल और एक्सटर्नल द इंटरनल इज एज फॉलो ना हम द आइडिया आई एम नॉट द बॉडी इज रेचका एक्जलेशन को हम हु एम आई इज पूर का इनहेलेशन सो हम आई एम ही इज कुंभ का रिटेंशन ऑफ ब्रेथ डूइंग दिस द ब्रेथ बिकम्स एटोमेटिकली कंट्रोल्ड एक्सटर्नल प्राणायाम इज फॉर वन नॉट एंडोड विद द स्ट्रेंथ टू कंट्रोल द माइंड there is no way so sure as control of mind pranayama need not be exactly as prescribed in hatha yoga if engaged in japa dhyana meditation bhakti etc just a little control of breath will suffice to control the mind the mind is the rider and the breath the horse pranayam is a check on the horse by that check the rider is checked pranayam may be done just a little to watch the breath is one way of doing it the mind is drawn away from other activities by being engaged in watching the breath that controls the breath and the mind in its turn is also controlled if rechka and porka are found difficult to practice retention of breath alone for a short while may be practiced while in japa dhyana etc that too will yield good results there is no other way of controlling the mind except as prescribed in the books like the gita drawing in the mind as often as it strays or goes outward and fixing it in the self of course it will not be easy to do it it will come only with practice or sadhana god illumines the mind and shines within it one cannot know god by means of the mind one can but turn the mind inwards and merge it in god the body composed of insentient matter cannot say i that is cannot be the cause of the i thought on the other hand the eternal consciousness cannot have such a thing as birth between the two something arises within the dimensions of the body this is the knot of matter and consciousness chit jada granthi variously called bondes jiva subtle body ego sansara attachment mind etc bhagwan pointed to his towel and said we call this a white cloth but the cloth and its whiteness cannot be separated and it is the same with the illumination and the mind that unite to form the ego the following illustration is given in the book the lamp in the theater is pra brahma or illumination it illuminates itself the stage and the actors we see the stage and the actors by its light but the light still continues when there is no more play another illustration is an iron rod that is compared to the mind fire joins it and it becomes red hot like fire it glows and can burn things but still it has a definite shape unlike fire if we hammer it it is the rod that receives the blow not the fire the rod is the jeev atman the fire the self or parmatman the mind can do nothing by itself it emerges only with the illumination and 
can do no action good or bad except with the illumination but while the illumination is always there enabling the mind to act well or ill the pleasure or pain resulting from such action is not felt by the illumination just as when you hammer a red hot iron it is not the fire but the iron that gets the hammering if we control the mind it does not matter where we live fourth topic is who am i inquiry for all thoughts the source is the i thought the mind will merge only by self inquiry who am i the thought who am i will destroy all other thoughts and finally kill itself also if other thoughts arise without trying to complete them one must inquire to whom did this thought arise what does it matter how many thoughts arise as each thought arises one must be watchful and ask to whom is this thought occurring the answer will be to me if you enquire who am i the mind will return to its source or where it issued from the thought which arose will also submerge as you practice like this more and more the power of the mind to remain at its source is increased by means of a moderate quantity of sattvic pure food which is superior to all other rules and regulations of self discipline the sattvic or pure quality of the mind will grow and self inquiry will be helped though ancient and timeless sense attachments in the shape of vasanas subtle tendencies may rise countless like the waves of the sea they will all be destroyed as dhyana progresses without giving any room for doubt where whether it would at all be possible to eradicate all those vasanas and be the self alone one must take hold ceaselessly of dhyana of the self however great a sinner one may be instead of lamenting i am a great sinner how can i make any progress one must completely forget the fact of the being a sinner and earnestly pursue meditation of self he is then sure to succeed if the ego is present all else will also exist if it is absent all else will also vanish as ego is all this to enquire what this ego is is to give up all attachment controlling speech and breath and diving deep within oneself as a man dives into water to recover something that has fallen there and one must find out the source whence the ego rises by means of keen insight enquiry which constitutes the path of jnana consists not in orally repeating i i but in searching by means of a deeply introverted mind where from the i springs to think i am not this or i am that may be of help in the enquiry but cannot be the actual enquiry when we quest within our mind who am i and reach the heart 
I topples down and immediately another entity will reveal itself proclaiming I I even though it also emerges saying I it does not connote the ego but the one perfect existence if we unceasingly investigate the form of the mind we find there is no such thing as the mind this is the direct path open to all thoughts alone constitute the mind and for all thoughts the base or source is the i thought i is the mind if we go inward questing for the source of the i the i topples down this is the jnana inquiry where the i emerges another entity emerges as i i of its own accord that is the perfect self there is no use removing doubts if we clear one doubt another arises and there will be no end of doubts all doubts will cease only when the doubter and his source have been found seek for the source of the doubter and you find he is really non existent doubter ceasing doubts will cease reality being yourself there is nothing for you to realize all regard the unreal as real what is required is that you give up regarding the unreal as real the object of all meditation dhyana or japa is only that to give up all thoughts regarding the non self to give up many thoughts and to hold on to one thought the object of all sadhana is to make the mind one pointed to concentrate it one thought and thus exclude our many thoughts if we do this eventually even the one thought will go and the mind will get extinguished in its source when we enquire within who am i the i investigated is the ego it is that which makes vichara enquiry also the self has no vichara that which makes the enquiry is the ego the i about which the enquiry is made is also the ego as the result of the enquiry the ego ceases to exist and only the self is found to exist what is the best way of killing the ego to each person that way is best which appears easiest or appeals the most all the ways are equally good as they lead to the same goal which is the merging of the ego in the self what is bhagta calls surrender the man who does vichara calls jnana both are trying to take the ego back to the source from which it sprang and make it merge there to ask the mind to kill itself is like making the thief the polish man he will go with you and pretend to catch the thief but nothing will be gained so you must turn inward and see from whence the mind rises and then it will cease to exist breath and mind arise from the same source and when one of them is controlled the other is also controlled as a matter of fact in the quest method which is more correctly whens am i and not merely who am i we are not simply trying to eliminate saying we are not the body nor the senses and so on 
to reach what remains as the ultimate reality but we are trying to find out whence the I thought or the ego arises within us. The method contains within it though implicitly and not expressly the watching of the breath. When we watch where from the I thought arises, we are necessarily watching the source of breath also as the I thought and the breath arise from the same source. Breath control may serve as an aid but can never by itself lead to the goal. While doing it mechanically, take care to be alert in mind and to remember the I thought and the quest for its source. Then you will find that where the breath sinks, there the I thought arises. They sink and arise together. The I thought will also sink along with the breath simultaneously another luminous and infinite I, I will emerge and it will be continuous and unbroken. That is the goal. It goes by different names, God, Self, Kundalini, Shakti, Consciousness, etc. Who am I is not a mantra. It means that you must find out where in you the I thought arises, which is the source of all other thoughts. But if you find that vichara marga, path of inquiry is too hard for you, you go on repeating I, I and that will lead you to the same goal. There is no harm in using I as a mantra. It is the first name of God. I ask you to see where the I arises in your body, but it is not really quite correct to say that the I rises from and merges in the heart on the right side of the chest. The heart is another name for the reality and it is neither inside nor outside the body. There can be no in and out for it. Since it alone is, I do not mean by heart any physiological organ, any plexus of nerves or anything like that. But so long as one identifies oneself with the body and thinks he is the body, he is advised to see in the body where the I thought rises and merges again. It must be the heart at the right side of the chest. Since every man of whatever race and religion and in whatever language he may be saying, I points to the right side of his chest to indicate himself. This is true all over the world. So that must be the place. And by keenly watching the constant emergence of the I thought, on waking and its subsiding in sleep, one can see that it is in the heart on the right side. First know who you are. This requires no sastra, scripture or scholarship. This is simply experience. The state of being is now and here all along. You have lost hold of yourself and are asking others for guidance. The purpose of philosophy is to turn the mind inward. If you know yourself, no evil can come to you. Because you ask me, I have told you this. See Kavala Navnita. The ego comes and only by holding you the self. Hold yourself and the ego will vanish. 
Until then, the sage will be happy saying, There is, and the ignorant will be asking, Where? Regulation of life, such as the getting up at a fixed hour, bathing, doing mantra, japa, etc. All this is for people who do not feel drawn to self-inquiry or are not capable of it. But for those who can practice this method, all rules and disciplines are unnecessary. Undoubtedly, it is said in some books that one should go on cultivating one good quality after another and thus prepare for moksha. But for those who follow the jnana or vichara marga, their sadhana is itself quite enough for acquiring all devic divine qualities. They need not do anything else. What is Gayatri? It really means, let me concentrate on that which illumines all. Fifth topic comes surrender. God will bear whatever burdens we put on Him. All things are being carried on by the omnipotent power of a Supreme God. Instead of submitting ourselves on to it, why should we always be planning? We should do this or that. Knowing that the train carries all the load, why should we travelling there in suffer by carrying our small bundles on our heads instead of leaving it on the train and being happy? The story of a Ashtavakra teaches that in order to experience Brahmagana, all that is necessary is to surrender yourself completely to the Guru, to give up your notion of I and mine. If these are surrendered, what remains is the reality. There are two ways of achieving surrender. One is looking into the source of the I and the merging into that source. The other is feeling I am the helpless myself. God alone is all powerful and except by throwing myself completely on Him. There is no other means of safety for me and thus gracefully developing the conviction that God alone exists and the ego does not count. Both methods lead to the same goal. Complete surrender is another name for jnana or liberation. Bhakti is not different from mukti. Bhakti is being as the self. One is always that. He realizes it by the means he adopts. What is bhakti? To think of God. That means only one thought prevails to the exclusion of all other thoughts. That thought is of God, which is the self or it is the self surrendered unto God. When he has taken you up, nothing else will assail you. The absence of thought is bhakti. It is also mukti. Bhakti is jnana mata, that is the mother of jnana. It is asked why all this creation is so full of sorrow and evil. All one can see, all one can say is that it is God's will, which is inscrutable. No motive, no desire, 
no end to achieve can be attributed to that infinite all wise and all powerful being god is untouched by activities which take place in his presence there is no meaning in attributing responsibility and motive to the one before it becomes many but god's will for the prescribed course of events is a good solution for the vexed question of free will if the mind is worried over what be false just or what has been committed or omitted by us it is wise to give up the sense of responsibility and free will by regarding ourselves as the ordained instruments of all the all wise and the all powerful to do and suffer as he pleases then he bears all the burdens and gives us peace a maharani told bhagwan i am blessed with everything that a human being would like to have her highness is wise choked controlling herself she continued slowly i have all that i want a human being may want but but i do not have peace of mind something prevents it probably my destiny there was silence for a while then bhagwan spoke in his usual sweet manner all right you have said what you wished to say well what is destiny there is no destiny surrender and all will be well throw all responsibility on god and do not bear the burden yourself what can destiny do to you then devotee surrender is impossible bhagwan yes complete surrender is impossible partial surrender is certainly possible for all in course of time that will lead to complete surrender well if surrender is impossible what can be done there is no peace of mind you are helpless to bring it about it can be done only by surrender devotee partial surrender well can it undo destiny bhagwan oh yes it can devotee is is not destiny due to past karma bhagwan if one has surrendered to god god will look to it devotee that being god's dispensation how does god undo it bhagwan all are in him only to a devotee who was praying that she should have more frequent visions of shiva bhagwan said surrender to him and abide by his will whether he appears or disappears await his pleasure if you ask him to do as you like it is not surrender but command to god you cannot have him obey you and yet think you have surrendered he knows what is best and when and how to do it his is the burden you have no longer any dears any cares all your cares are his such is surrender that is bhakti topic number 6 the three states waking dream and sleep there is no difference between the dream and the waking state except that the dream is short and the waking long both are the result of the mind our real state is called turiya which is beyond the waking dream and sleep states the self alone exists and remains as it is the three states owe their existence to avichara non enquiry and enquiry puts an end to them however much one may explain this fact will not become clear 
until one attains self-realization and wonders how he was blind to the self-evident and only existence for so long. All that we see is a dream, whether we see it in the dream state or waking state. On account of some arbitrary standards about the duration of the experience and so on, we call one experience a dream and another waking experience. With reference to reality, both the experiences are unreal. A man might have an experience such as getting anugraha grace in his dream and the effects and influence of it on his entire subsequent life may be so profound and abiding that one cannot call it unreal. Whilst calling real some trifling incident in the waking life that just flits by, which is casual of no consequence and is soon forgotten. Once I had an experience, a vision or a dream, whatever you may call it, I and others including Chadwick had a walk on the hill. Returning, we were walking along a huge street with great buildings on either side. Pointing out the street and the buildings, I asked Chadwick and others whether anybody could say that what we were seeing was a dream and they all replied, which fool will say so. We then walked along, entered the hall, and the vision or dream seized, or I woke up. What are we to call this? Just before waking up from sleep, there is a very brief state, free from thought, that should be made permanent. In dreamless sleep, there is no world, no ego and no unhappiness, but the self remains. In the waking state, there are all of these. Yet there is the self. One has only to remove the transitory happiness in order to realize the ever-present beautitude of the self. Your nature is bliss. Find that on which all the rest are superimposed and you then remain as the pure self in sleep there is no space or time they are concepts which arise and the i thought has arisen you are beyond time and space the i thought is the limited i the real i is unlimited universal beyond time and space just while rising from sleep and before seeing the objective world there is state of awareness which is your pure self that must be known so at this point i complete this video next video number two on this topics i will start with topic number seven grace and grow very very important thank you for watching this video namaskar my dear friend thank you